hey guys welcome back to another dream daddy video let's just get right into it hey buddy so i have a favor to ask robert invited me over for dinner and i know it's kind of a faux pas to invite another bro but i've known the guy for years and i still can't get a good read on him and i know it's gonna be super awkward if i go by myself will you please come with me um some sus emojis i love food i especially love food that's free and i don't know why you're so sweaty over cooking but sure yeah, dude, I'm down. Thank you. Can you stop with that emoji? I really hope that's a sweat of relief. I mean, I, I guess that's what we're doing today. Oh, man. I don't know how I feel about social time with Robert. Still, I guess free food is free food. Craig and I decide to meet up before heading over to Robert's place. Craig's waiting on my porch, bottle of white wine in hand. Jen, boy, am I glad to see you. Likewise, man. Classy of you to bring wine. Oh, it's not wine. It's sparkling apple cider. Robert literally has a wine cellar, so I think he's good. Wow. Or at least I think he has a wine cellar. I'm genuinely unsure if he was telling the truth or not. I can never tell with him. Thank God it's not just me. He's so deadpan about everything. I usually just laugh it off, but man, that guy's an enigma. We start walking over to Robert's house. Does Robert even know how to cook? I have sincere doubts about whether he even knows how to shave properly or iron his shirts. I feel like you learn to cook after you learn those two first. One time, I saw him grab a hot dog from a trash can. I mean, it was at the very top of a trash can, like sitting above it, but still. If you were on trial, I think the jury would define that as in the trash. In his defense, I've definitely considered grabbing food from the top of the trash before. Well, yeah, I think we've all considered it, but the difference is that Robert actually did it. True, maybe he's the enlightened one. Maybe we're holding ourselves back. We arrive at Robert's house and ring the doorbell, but the doorbell won't chime. Hmm, must be broken. Craig knocks on the door a few times. Since when does Robert have a dog? I don't know, that's weird. I can hear Robert just inside. One second! This is uncharted territory, Jen. What if he's the one making barking noises and there is no dog? Don't say that, we're not even inside yet. Finally, the door opens. Robert looks pretty stunned to see me and quickly adjusts his posture to try to hide it. This is going to be weird, isn't it? Yeah, I feel like he should have told him. I... Jen, didn't know you'd be tagging along. Oh, oh. Did Craig not tell Robert I was coming? Come on, Craig. I can leave if there's not... Mm -hmm. No, no, it's fine. Come on in. Wipe your feet. Awkward. We enter Robert's living room, which is a lot more inviting than I remember it being. Make yourselves at home. Is this inviting we can still hear barking from the other room i don't know you have a dog robert oh yeah that's betsy have to put her up when guests are over she'll calm down in a bit what kind of dog is she pitbull rescued her from a dog fighting ring a few years back she hates strangers if i let her out right now i would probably have to take you both to the er craig and i make eye contact he raises an eyebrow at me oh okay but uh i gotta go finish dinner made us also, Buko? Robert leaves the room, presumably to go to the kitchen. Craig leans in and whispers. Was the dog fighting thing real or was he kidding? I don't know. What's also Buko? I don't know. Did he make up that word? Until I have also Buko in front of me, we can only assume so. We sit in silence for a second, taking in Robert's living room. Are we about to get sawed? Nah, usually you wake up in those situations. We voluntarily walked into this one, although he did look pretty shocked to see you. Maybe you being here threw off his plans? His murder plans? This is so weird. Robert finally walks into the room, carrying three paper plates of steaming food like a waiter. I don't have a dining table. Don't trust them. So we're eating here. Also, I don't have real people plates. Hope that's okay. Robert sets plates in front of us on the coffee table. I still can't tell what it is. Looks like meat. Maybe. Lots of sauce. I can make out some vegetables. I think that might be rice, but it could also be pasta. Guess there's only one way to find out. I take a bite. Hey. Oh my god. I take another bite. The medley of flavors in this dish is amazing. The meat is so tender and the risotto, I think th that's what it is, is so creamy. Mm. Robert, this is really incredible. You cooked this? 
There's a pregnant pause as Robert formulates a response, like it's weird to get a compliment from me. I fished it out of a dumpster behind a restaurant. Or at least I think it was a restaurant. Can you believe people just throw this stuff away? I almost gag. I look over at Craig, who looks rary, but still has his mouth full. He gives Robert a thumbs up. Glad you like it. Where did you learn how to cook like this? Worked at a restaurant in Spain for a hot sec. Is he messing with us? I decide to play along. You lived in Spain? After I dropped out of college, I went backpacking through Europe, crashing on couches, sleeping in hostels, wherever. Totally broke. Worked a couple of odd jobs wherever I could to scrape together some cash. One night, I'm eating dinner at this little restaurant just outside of Madrid. I go to pay and realize I spent the last of my money on booze the night before. I'm in the middle of ditching when the manager catches me and puts me to work in the kitchen. Long story short, they ended up liking me so much, they offered me a job. Why not, right? Started living with some distant relatives on my ma's side. Over the course of two years, I worked my way up from busboy to sous chef. Learned a lot. Craig and I wait for the punchline. What night watchman did he swindle to get back to the States? Who did he con in a game of poker in the back room of a speakeasy for safe passage in the crew quarters of a cargo ship? What is happening? Anyway, I still love to cook. I don't know what's real anymore, but this food's so good, I kind of don't care. Plus, Robert is actually talking to me like we're two people in the same room, which I guess is nice. That's amazing. It really is. To be totally honest, I wasn't exactly expecting gourmet cooking here, especially not served on paper plates. I don't care about presentation. If the food is good, it should speak for itself. This asabuco is screaming for itself. And paper plates are just as good as regular plates if you double them up. Hmm. Hey, is it bad if I ask for seconds? No problem, but save room for dessert. I made lemon berry sovereign. Well, aren't you just full of... Craig looks over at me. Surprises. Robert winks. You bet I am. You can come over for dinner anytime. Craig. This is so awkward. Does Robert hate me? Um, I'm gonna go get seconds. Me too. After consuming way more asabuco than my body could handle and then really ensuring a later food coma with a generous serving of whatever Saverin was, Craig and I decide to head out. Thanks for coming. I'm making an attempt to be more social. Something tells me he's not going to follow through on that. That's so mean. Man, if you'll have me, I'm here. Especially if there's asabuco involved. Is that a real word? Am I saying it right? So I have one heart with Craig, one heart with Matt, none with Brian, two with Robert, none with Damien, none with Hugo, and none with Joseph. I kind of want to go on a date with Matt or Craig, but I did just go on a date with Craig, but it's the fact that it wasn't really a date date, so I'm like kind of sad about that. But I really liked the concert date with Matt. That was really nice. I don't know if we're counting these things as dates yet, but I am. I think I'm going to go on another date with Craig. I just can't help it. I really want to get some good quality time in with Craig. The last time we hung out, he was so busy with the kids and fending off flirty moms that I feel like we barely talked. Exactly. Ever since the first time we hung out, I've been trying to get up a little early for runs. I don't think I'm going to be as embarrassing as last time. Maybe I'll even be able to catch up with him now what i type out a message to him on dad book hey man been training on my run game recently ready for a round two craig responds almost immediately dude of course emojis uh i don't know why he didn't just send me an emoji rather than type it out another message pops into my inbox from craig let's meet up early tomorrow morning for my favorite morning activity brunch I type back, brunch? What's that? Well, he capitalized run. You run and then you get brunch. All right. Craig and I agree to a time to meet in the morning and I have a chance to spend the evening hanging out with Amanda. So are we doing pizza tonight? Again? Can't we do like a salad night? Dad, are you on a health kick? I, not yet. I formed the committee to examine the possibility of being on a health kick. They haven't returned with their findings. 
dad if you go on a health kick then i have to go on a health kick by virtue of being under the same roof as you i don't know if i have the constitution for that don't worry about it the committee is still out i'm sorry amanda it's time i'm gonna say the committee is still out the committee isn't back with its findings yet this is a multi-year assessment on several bureaucratic levels well amanda picks up the phone and stares at me i'm blinking as she dials hi yes can i get an extra large pizza with chicken bacon extra cheese and tomatoes and a couple of the garlic sauce cups amanda you're going a little north here all oh, right can you maybe throw some leaves on there or something yeah he's going on a health kick yeah rico i know it's tragic amanda listens for a second hold on i'll ask dad is oregano a salad oregano is not a salad can't blame me for trying now nah, rico i'm talking to my dad we'll just go with the meat lover's fantasy sure Say hi to the wife and kids for me. Amanda hangs up. Rico says hey. The food gets delivered and we plop down on the couch to eat some stuff. Just be careful. Running is a gateway drug. It's a slippery slope, dad. First you go on a couple light jogs and before you know it, you're converting the garage into a home gym and renewing your subscription to some sort of weekly kombucha delivery service. Question. Shoot. What's kombucha? Okay, so you aren't too far gone then. I'm just giving you a hard time, Pops. I'm really happy you're running more and caring about your health. I want to keep you around for as long as possible. Thanks, kiddo. Speaking of which, I'm running with Craig tomorrow. You gonna be able to keep up with him? Hey. Probably not. We laugh and eat more pizza than is probably healthy in the name of carbo loading. I call it a night early so that I'm ready for tomorrow. When I first started running in the mornings, it was pretty hellish. Now that I'm a few sessions in... It admittedly has become a little bit easier, despite it always ending in me dry heaving over a trash can. Is that what the runner's high is? Just dry heaving? I lace up my tennis shoes, throw on a t-shirt from a rider's summit I went to 20 years ago, and head out the door at a moderate jog. Craig is already outside with river strapped to his chest. He's dressed head to toe in color-coordinated running gear. Wow, I look like a total schlub next to this guy. Hey, bro! Morning, Craig. River gonna be running with us? Oh. Best as she can. We're taking it to the limit, aren't we, kiddo? Goo. Oh. oh, I know what that means. Craig hands her a stuffed toy, which makes her smile ear to ear. Mm -hmm. Aww. That's Arnold the capybara. Capybara? Capybara? Anyways, sometimes it's the only thing that'll get her to stop crying. Oh, I've been there. Amanda had a stuffed panda that she carried around everywhere. She would have a tantrum if we even tried to wash it. It was gross. So you've been running lately? Every morning for 30 minutes. I'm basically an elite athlete by this point. Huh, well, I'll try and keep up. So where are we headed? I was thinking that we could do a couple laps around the park. Okay, that sounds reasonable. Then we'll do some hill climbs up a slope. Uh, okay, I can probably handle that. And then we'll close it off by doing some wilderness survival hike running to increase our agility. I'm suddenly struck with the overwhelming need to crawl back into bed. That sound okay to you? I usually like to throw some timed murder sprints in there, but I'll go easy on you since you're a beginner. That sounds like something I am able to physically do. Great, let's get started. Um, okay. Craig and I finally arrive at the park. A few other lone joggers make their way around the perimeter, and River waves enthusiastically at everyone we pass. It's a lot more peaceful in the mornings. Aside from birds chirping and River gurgling away in the stroller, it's pretty quiet. Alright, good warm-up. That was the warm-up? Hey. Let's start the show. But wait. Craig reaches into his bag and tosses me a water bottle. I fumble it, but thankfully don't drop it. Oh. You gotta hydrate, bro. I take a long drink from the water bottle and feel reinvigorated. Man, I don't drink enough water. Literally me. <laughs> hey, I look down and pick up Arnold, River's toy, and hand it back to her. Must have dropped this. Thanks for looking out, bro. You ready? My body is collapsing in on itself. We finally finish our however many teenth lap around the park. I'm breathing heavily, but I can't believe I actually didn't lose Craig. He's even breathing heavily too, which makes me feel a little better. 
I look down at my shirt and notice that I'm drenched in sweat. Huh. Almost looks like a frowny face. That's one. What? Hey. I'm just kidding. Good hustle out there. I'm really impressed. You're way better than last time I launched you off a treadmill. Yeah, man, you really pushed me to my limit just now. I can't believe I held on. Sometimes you just need someone there with you to push you to do your absolute best. I'm glad I could be that guy, bro. Who's ready for hill climbs? Blip. There's my little cheerleader. Jen, you ready? Ugh. 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 I'll go with a middle ugh. You bet. Craig takes me to a separate portion of the park where there's a steep hill that seems to go up forever. I strain my eyes to see some other joggers at the top. So what do we do now? We run up the thing. That looks like a lot. Jen, there's two things you need to know about this hill. One, don't stop running till you get to the top. And two, Craig points to the top of the hill. Nice. That's not the top. Uh, uh, let's do this. I finally reached the top of the hill after making my way past what I originally thought was the top of the hill. Once there, I hunch over onto my knees and gasp for air. My lungs are like daggers poking my ribs. I can feel my heart in my ears. <laughs> River, I'm having a moment, please. Oh boy. Craig looks like he's taking a beating as well. Ha, ah, so he is human. Jen, put your arms on your head and stretch out your elbows. It'll help you breathe better. I do as Craig says. It feels a little better, but I'm still in agony. And here. Craig tosses me the water bottle again. I hydrate like my life depends on it. Thanks, dude. Phenomenal work. You feel that lightness in your head? That's the runner's high. Oh, that's it. I thought I was just, you know, dying. Want to take it slow for a bit? I would like that very much. As we're catching our breath, River starts crying. Oh, what's wrong, sweet Pete? Do you want to play with Arnold? Craig looks around us. Oh boy, man down. I think we lost Arnold. River keeps wailing. I've abandoned my child toy we gotta find him dude it should be simple right we just gotta retrace our steps i remember river last having it down at the bottom of the hill craig and i jog down the path searching high and low for the stuffed capybara which craig takes the time to explain to me is a large rodent native to south america we get to the place where river might have dropped it but it's still nowhere to be found looks like we got a mystery on our hands we have to get to the bottom of this i suspect foul play Looks like this is a prime case for world-renowned Detective Dodo. Dude, it's time for a bro adventure. A bro venture. We gotta stop calling each other bro. We high five and decide to jog back to the park to see if we can find any leads. So it looks like there's a couple more places to check and some bros around here that we could interrogate. Sounds good. Wait, who's good cop and who's bad cop? I think about it for a second. Well, I think that with your stature and overall resilience, you would make an intimidating bad cop. But on the other hand, you do have an adorable baby strapped to your chest, so that softens the edges a bit. All valid points. I think you would make a great good cop because of your congenial attitude and willingness to try new things. But then again, I've seen how you get when there are too many commercial breaks during a show, so you have the potential to be a scary bad cop. I don't want to have to watch Meat Hell in three minute segments with five minutes of commercials in between. And they're loud. The commercials are too loud. I just want to watch my shows in peace without people yelling at me to buy wiper fluid and stuff. Bro. Case in point. Let's play it moment by moment. Smart. So, where to, bro, detective? We can go to the playground, go to the field, or go to the woods. Let's go to the field. We wander out to a grassy field at the center of the park. There isn't a whole lot to see, but there are a few figures camped out on a blanket, and the grass could hold any number of secrets. Matt and Carmencita look for clues, interrogate River, move to another part of the park. Let's talk to Matt and Carmencita. Carmencita spots us from across the way and waves. She's sitting down with her dad on a sunny green patch of grass we jog over. Hey dudes! Hey bro. We just sat down for a picnic. Want some snacks? Got anything to increase my glycogen reserves? Uh, we have apple slices. Thank you very much, tiny bro, but I should be fine. You guys working out? 
Good day for it. Yep, I'm the picture of health and athleticism. Good transition, Jen. Say, you haven't seen a stuffed capybara around here anywhere, have you? What's a capybara? It's a large rodent that's native to South America. Wait a second, how do you know what a capybara- bar I think I'm saying it differently every time. Is, you wouldn't happen to have had hands-on experience with one recently, would you? We learned about capybaras in the fourth grade. I think it's more suspicious that you know what a capybara is. Hey. Oh my god. What if I took Arnold? What if I'm the culprit and I just don't remember? I quickly check my body for any Polaroids I might have kept on my person to remind me of who to trust and who not to trust. I saw Memento once and I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Nothing. But what if that's what I wanted myself to think? No, Jen. Don't let them win. I shake off the thought. I saw a couple of squirrels over by that tree, though. I don't know if that helps, but if you want to see some cute squirrels, you should definitely check it out. Thanks for the hot squirrel tip, Carmencita. Nice. Well, we better get moving. Gotta find that capybara before River here has a breakdown. Hey. Good luck. Let me get some apples for the road, though. Carmencita hooks me up with some road slices and we're on our way. We maneuver back to the field. We can check out the squirrels. Where did the suspect say these? The suspect is crazy. Where did the suspect say the squirrels would be again? The tree, right? Ah, there they are. Carmen Sita was telling the truth. These are some rad squirrels. River seems happy. This may have bought us some extra time. That's good. Let's look for clues. We carefully comb through the field of grass and flowers. I can't seem to find much besides a couple of ladybugs and a nickel. While I'm looking, Craig calls out for me from across the field. Jen! Oh. I jog over. Craig is kneeling in the grass, inspecting something. I approach, my heart in my throat. As I lean over Craig, I see it. This is... Arnold's leg! I put my hand over River's eyes. No one should have to be subjected to this senseless violence. My god, who or what would do this? Oh, I don't know, but now I think we might be dealing with something beyond our grasp. I can't look at this anymore. I turn around, trying to wipe the image of the stuffing strewn across the ground from my mind. Oh my god, her eyes are closed. We're running out of time. We may already be too late. Bag and tag it. Let's keep moving. This is so serious. Okay, let's move to... The playground? Maybe a kid like tore it up. We make our way over to a small playground at the edge of the park. A couple of kids play on the jungle gym while parents watch on the nearby benches. Over on one of the benches, I spot a familiar face. Talk to Joseph. Let's see what Joseph's up to. We jog over to Joseph, who seems to be engrossed in his book. Nice. Joseph! Joseph nearly drops his book. Hey guys, didn't think I'd see you two out here. Jen, are you exercising? Sure am. You know me. I just love to run and be healthy. That's kind of my whole thing. What are you reading? Oh, just a book on knots and rope tying. For boats. Boat ropes. Right. Say, you didn't happen to see a stuffed capybara around here? What's a capybara? It's a large rodent that's native to South America. Justin thinks for a second. Hmm. I haven't seen one around. I'll tell the kids to keep an eye out. Your kids are here? Joseph looks around. They were here a second ago. Must have gone exploring around the park. Do you know where they could have run off to? Yeah. They're kids. They get into mischief sometimes, but they always come back. That sounds a little suspect, Joseph. Mischief, you say? I, uh... Wait, am I being interrogated right now? Only if he did something wrong. What are you hiding, Joseph? Whoa! Kind of getting the third degree here. This is serious! There's a capybara on the line! I mean, you're more than welcome to ask Christian and Christy. I imagine they have their ears to the ground on all the latest playground drama. They might be somewhere around the woods. Thanks, Joseph. We'll let you get back to your rope book. Boat ropes! We head back to the playground. I'm going to try to calm River down. It's a pretty nice playground. Might as well get a couple swings in. What about Arnold? Maybe having a little swing might calm River down. Might buy us some more time. You're right. She's about to go nuclear. This might 
prepare her for the possibility of us not being able to find Arnold. Life is cruel and tough, but at least we'll always have swings. Craig straps River into the baby swing and gives her a gentle push. She giggles. I take a seat on the swing next to her and immediately realize that I'm stuck. River seems to love that. Craig eventually hops me out of the swing and we decide to get back to the investigation. Let's look for more clues. Craig and I, two grown adults, walk onto the playground and begin examining it meticulously for clues. There's no forensic evidence here, no stray capybara hairs at least. After searching fruitlessly for some time, we look up. All of the parents are staring at us. We smile and wave as we awkwardly slink away. Let's move to another part of the park. I've deduced where we should go next. We go to the woods. We make our way to the outskirts of the park. There are a couple of benches by the dense tree line. Looks like Robert's here all by himself. What? This also seems like the perfect place to look for clues. Joseph's twins must be around here somewhere. We could talk to Robert. Maybe Robert saw something. We walk over to Robert's bench. Hey, Rob. Don't call me that. Okay. Hi, Robert. Don't call me that either. Um, okay. Hey, buddy. I don't know. What are you up to? Thinking. This is my thinking bench. I have to get a solid two to three hours of brooding in per day. Filling quotas. Have you by any chance seen a small stuffed capybara around? A capybara is it's a large rodent native to South America. I know. So have you seen one? A stuffed one, not a real one. That would be weird. Hmm. Let's be bad cop. Well, fine. If you don't tell us what we want to hear, I'm going to spoil the season finale of Long Haul Paranormal Ice Road Ghost Truckers. You're bluffing. My buddy here doesn't play by the rules. Jen will do it. Callum and Flint crash into a haunted... Stop! You're a monster! Robert sighs. I haven't seen any goddamn capybara, okay? Crap, I was really nailing the dad cop bit, too. I thought for sure we had something. <laughs> now what, bro? Joseph said his twins were around here somewhere, but I have no idea how we're supposed to find them. Wait, those creepy kids? Why did you tell me they had something to do with this? Huh. Maybe I should have left the good cop, bad cop routine to the pros on TV. Yeah, Robert, bro, do you know where they are? I do. A lot of people underestimate the senses of the man who broods. I saw them lurking around here a little while ago. Where'd they go? Ran into the woods. I'd be careful, though. I don't trust them. Bro, I don't trust them either. They're spooky. But then again, I don't trust anyone. Not even you guys. Not even that baby. Burp. I take that back. You're an old soul, kiddo. Thanks for your help, Robert. Let's go deeper into the woods. I stare into the depths of the forest. Who knows what could be in there? Are you prepared for what we might face in here? I'm ready, partner bro. You? Nope. But if it gets River to stop crying, I don't care. Let's do this. We start down the path into the woods, keeping our eyes and ears peeled for any sign of Arnold. There are no squirrels or birds anywhere. The silence is unsettling. The sun can barely peek through the canopy. It's colder here. Why are the little kids hanging here? Can Joseph come get his kids? Suddenly, we hear voices. I want to do it. You got to do it last time. Craig and I come to a clearing where we find Christian and Christine kneeling over something. Stop right there and put your tiny hands where we can see them. Christian and Christy just stare at us. You heard the guy. Put your hands up. We're kind of in the middle of something here. Yeah, can you come back later? What are you kids doing? Cutting stuff up? Bro, these kids are evil. My heart is pounding. Is this, is this the end of the line? I step closer. I can't believe what I'm seeing. A pair of safety scissors lies in the dirt. And it's Arnold. What have they done to him? Arnold! Goob! You heard the baby. Hand over the capybara. No fair! Finders keepers! No, not finders keepers. That's our property and you've desecrated it. Well, how can you prove it's yours? Craig holds up Arnold's severed leg. I have to look away. You two got sloppy. You left evidence behind. I think you'll find that this leg fits perfectly onto his body. Christian and Christy look at each other. They don't know what to do. How about a deal? You give us the capybara and we don't tell your dad about this. 
fine. She hands over the stuffed animal. And give us those safety scissors. They are clearly no longer safe in your hands. She hands them over. I'm glad we could figure this out. Come on, partner. Craig and I start making our way out of the woods. He turns around and calls back to the twins. And tell your dad to stop letting you watch true crime shows. With the capybara back with his rightful owner, Craig and I shamble into a nearby diner, exhausted from our adventure. We find ourselves a corner booth and settle in. That was a tough case, but we cracked it. We're different now. Changed. Did we get in too deep? It's nothing a hearty brunch can't fix. My stomach grumbles. I suddenly realize how big of an appetite I worked up. Brunch! Give me brunch! I have strong philosophies on brunch. You see, the first thing you do is divide your brunches between bougie brunch, the upper class mimosas and eggs benedict brunch, and grimy brunch. Give me coffee and bacon and cheesy hash browns brunch. There's a time and a place for both, and I think most of life is about figuring out which one you need more. So what kind of brunch dad are you, Jen? Oh, I'm, I'm grimy brunch. We get fried and oily and clean the floors with the hose, and I'll be happy. A fine choice, but wait, aren't you going on a health kick? You gotta treat yourself. Are we not dads? And is brunch not a higher calling than a mere diet? <laughs> Student becomes the master. A young waitress passes out menus as Craig situates River into a high chair. Is this your kid? Mm -hmm. You betcha. She's so cute. Hi, you. Blah. Hey, kid. Middle school is going to be really tough, but if you can make it through that, you can make it through anything. The waitress walks away after winking at Craig. I roll. Seems like you're the most eligible dad bachelor in town. Why is that so hard to say? I guess so. Okay, you know. Anyways, here's the thing about brunch. You don't do business during brunch. Brunch is a time for rest, relaxation, and restoration with those that you love. And while we're having brunch at a traditionally brunch time, the most important thing to remember is that brunch isn't a time. It's a state of mind. If you can't have brunch on your plates, you can always have brunch in your heart. I don't disagree with you. I just don't know if I can match your intensity. I'll open your eyes, bro. Just you wait. Oh, I'm waiting. We order our food and the waitress, after very blatantly hitting on Craig multiple times, eventually brings us our brunch feast. River munches on cereal right next to us, more or less managing to get it in her mouth. Nice. I gotta say, man, it's really great having you back around to hang out with. Things have been so busy with work and fitness and the kids. I just haven't had time to really go out and get to know people. With you here, it's like we're picking up where we left off. I know the feeling, man. Moving to a new place could have been really tough for me, especially with Amanda going off to college soon. You're making this a lot easier. Craig smiles at me. It feels really good to go on another brew venture with you, dude. Just like old times. For a while, I forgot about anything that was bothering me in my life. And it was just you and me and... More coffee? Girl, shut the- Oh, no thank you. So do you like work out? I don't know. Yeah, mostly calisthenics, but I try to lift as part of the regimen. That's so cool. I've been looking for a workout buddy, you know? Mm. I wish I could help you out, but I'm enjoying brunch with my workout bro right now. Hello! Well, if you change your mind... The waitress slides a folded note to Craig and walks away. Craig makes a face as he reluctantly puts it into his pocket. We can't take you anywhere, can we? It's a blessing and a curse, isn't it? The next time we hang out should be in the middle of the woods where people can't interrupt us. Oh, and also maybe in some different woods than the ones where we where little kids like to vivisect, vi vi vivisect things. Craig laughs. Man, remember all our camping road trips back in the day? Joshua Tree, Yellowstone, that was the best. I'd give anything to do that all over again. Dude, we should go on a camping weekend. Oh, I don't know, bro. I'm an adult now. I have all these adult responsibilities. I don't think I can just drop everything to go hang out in the woods for a few days, you know? Come on, dude. If we plan things right, we can do this. Craig, don't you ever do anything for yourself? Craig stares into his coffee mug. Of course I do. Yeah? Like what? Yikes. Sometimes I let myself have one scoop of vanilla ice cream before bed. But only if I didn't meet my caloric intake for the day. This is just sad. 
and sometimes I let myself hit the snooze alarm, but only once. Dude, you gotta relax sometime or it's gonna kill you. Please come camping with me, it'd be so fun, bro. I guess I could get Smashly to take kids for the weekend. I'll think about it. We finish our brunches and head back to the cul-de-sac. By the way, great job keeping up today. Seems like you were already making a lot of progress. Ha, huh. I'm probably gonna need a little bit of recovery time after this. Tell the girls I said hello. Hey. I will. See ya, protective. <laughs> I say goodbye to Craig and step inside. God, I'm ready for a shower, a gallon of water, and a nap. Hmm, I bet Amanda's still asleep. I crack open her door to find her still in bed, sleepily scrolling through her phone. Morning. Afternoon, actually. Mm. Right. How was brunch? It was good. We kind of got sidetracked because we had to travel into the depths of Maples Bay dark underbelly to find a toy river dropped. But, you know, I actually feel pretty great. My legs give out. I find myself on the floor of the hallway. I'm just going to hang out here for a while. You take your time getting up. Date complete! <laughs> Boom! That was an S. That looks like the Amazon logo. Dadmazon. Okay, I knew it. Hi, this is Stephen from Dadmazon. I'm out front with your delivery. Oh, okay. Yes, I'll be right down. Wait, no, sorry. I need to put on pants first. Boy! What? I can't find my pants... But I'm wrapped from waist down in a duvet. Are you cool with that? I can come back tomorrow. No, no, wait. I'll be right down. I found some sensible capris. I need to say all that. Ooh, I got a package. Wonder what it is. Oh, I bet it's that package of socks I ordered. I open up the box and start pulling the packing peanuts out. Man, these socks reek. Okay, that's definitely not socks. It's butterflies boy i almost don't even want to know what amanda was planning on doing with these hey amanda your box of dead butterflies is here what's up are you sacrificing them what you ordered butterflies you can order dead butterflies online wait so these aren't yours uh no but i'm definitely ordering some right now um okay love you i take a look at the box again Oh, this is addressed to Damien's house. Bring the box to Damien. I'm not gonna give it to Amanda if it's not mine. Isn't that, like, illegal? I should take it over to him. Oh, my God. Why does he live in the goth house? I jog over to Damien's house with the box. I pull back his door knocker, but suddenly the door opens. Mr. Dodo, to what do I owe the pleasure? Whoa, how did you know I was about to knock? uh i don't know okay um anyways i think this got delivered to my house by mistake oh i hand him the box and his face lights up what a wonderful surprise i was just about to send a strongly worded letter to the courier service about this many thanks um not to pry but what are you gonna do with those butterflies would you like to see um Alarm bells ring in my head. This is how you die, Jen Dodo. Sure. Oh my god, wait. This is such a cute study. Damien leads me into his study, where he set up some sort of workstation. Above his desk is a wall of pinned butterflies, moths, and beetles. Oh wow, that's really something, Damien. I'm quite proud of my little collection. You do all of this yourself? Huh. Of course. I find it rather relaxing. How do you... It's simple. Here, let me show you. Ah! How do I feel about that? These aren't ready quite yet. They'll need to be rehydrated overnight, so they're easy to work with. I have some over here that are ready to pin. Damien takes a seat at his desk while I hover behind him. He picks up a little triangular paper package and snips off the edges. He pulls out an all-black butterfly and shows it to me. I'm rather excited about this one. It's a turquoise swallowtail. He gently opens the wings, spreading the butterfly out on the table. The backs of the wings are a gorgeous iridescent green color. Oh, and the pigment on this one is so nice too. Anyways, pinning a butterfly is actually very simple. It just requires a delicate touch. First, I'll put a pin through the thorax. Damien slides a pin through the middle of the butterfly 
and places the butterfly on a piece of styrofoam. He carefully arranges the antenna with forceps and begins placing paper and more pins on around it. He does this so effortlessly that it's almost hypnotic. This reminds me of the one scene from Tinkerbell where the, like, the human dad likes to pin butterflies and he wants to pin Tinkerbell and it's kind of freaky. I have a frame here that I think this one will look quite pretty in, but I'll need to let it sit for a couple of days until it's ready. And then what? I remove all of the pins and put it on display with the others. I take a closer look at Damien's collection. One with bright blue wings keeps drawing my eye. This one's so pretty. Damien takes it off the wall. Ah, yes. That's a blue morpho, one of my favorites too. He hands a small frame to me. Here, I think this would look lovely in your home. What? Wait, that's so nice. Oh, I couldn't take this. I insist, believe me, I have more than enough. Thank you. Are we about to kiss? If you ever have an interest in pinning some insects yourself, you know where to find me. Haha, ah, I think I'll leave that up to you. I feel like I'd probably break them in half with my butterfingers. Mm. Nonsense. You have beautiful, steady hands. You would make a fine taxidermist. I can't tell if he's flirting with me or not. But... Thank you. Am I blushing? I think we're about to kiss. Damien walks me to the door and gives me a warm smile as I leave. <laughs> Do take care of yourself, Jen. Thanks for allowing me to share my odd little hobby with you. I think that'll be it for this video. Maybe I'll go on a date with Damien next time. Who knows? Because that was a very cute interaction. I do find him a little spooky, but I think that's just his vibe. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.